Ever heard the saying that a soldier's diary holds untold tales of bravery and sacrifice? Well, guess what? Today, we're cracking open the covers of the diary belonging to a German veteran, Franz Eschner, who saw that the war was ending and that the end was in sight, as he explains in his diary. His journey through the chaos of World War II was truly remarkable. All right, let's kick this off. After I graduated from the Automobile School of Mechanics in the Vienna factory, I got a call to join the RAD, which is the Reich Labor Service. They sent me to a construction site in Linz, where they were building something for the important party members. I stayed there until around 1940. Later, I was moved from Linz to Westphalia, to a place called Radstadt in Breisgau. My job was to help build defenses for the Western Wall before the war with France started. When the French campaign started, I was summoned to the engineering assault unit. They wanted us to help attack the Maginot Line. That's where I saw the first people hurt by the war. Once the ceasefire happened, I got a chance to really see the French fortifications. I checked out the 75-kilometer underground railroad, bunkers and hospitals. After France surrendered, I found myself back in Vienna. They put me in the 134th Infantry Regiment. We spent a lot of time practicing offensive tactics in flooded areas. To get the hang of it, we had to march 75 kilometers from Strebersdorf village to the Allensteeg training ground. We trained there to learn different ways of attacking. Later on, I became a lieutenant's batman, helping his wife with shopping and doing chores. Things changed when I joined the 3rd Tank Regiment. I was placed in the maintenance company due to my inexperience. We were trained on tanks like Panzer II, Panzer III and Panzer IV, with a short 75mm gun on the bloody field. Apart from our regular training, we practiced crew embarkation and disembarkation under fire. While training, I continued working in the maintenance company. We received orders to head to the Greek border, passing through Hungary and Romania toward Yugoslavia. That's where I became a motorcycle messenger for a tank company. Things started off well. We marched through Yugoslavia smoothly, joining Austrian mountain rifle units to attack the Metaxas line. Despite losses, we crossed Thermopylae and claimed Olympus. But I got hit by high-altitude fever ending my time on the motorcycle. I wasn't too sad about it, though. I wasn't thrilled, either. They sent me to Larissa for treatment. There I saw U-52 planes prepping for a Crete attack. Once I recovered, I returned to Thessaloniki. There's a memory that sticks. During the roll call, eight British planes bombed us. Our commander hid in a shelter, which happened to be a company toilet. He emerged brown instead of white, met with laughter. I laughed the most and got a three-day arrest. Not too bad. I needed rest from my illness. I was assigned to help transport reserve units to Thessaloniki for our company. Meanwhile, other units of the 2nd Panzer Division, along with Austrians, set off for Paltras on ships, Hipfels and Marburg. Unfortunately, British submarines torpedoed and sank the ships as they left Corinth Bay. This led to losses in tanks, motorcycles, rifles and men for our division. During our march through Albania and Kosovo, we encountered a cow in a field. We were about to butcher it when a peasant girl appeared, pleading for her only cow. Despite her protest, we went ahead leaving her with nothing. We traveled to Trieste, where our commanders told us about the ships being lost. I had orders to go to Nuremberg via Vienna and Jerlingen. I got a chance to visit my parents in Vienna. Then in Nuremberg, we were ordered to participate in occupying southern France. We ended up in the Rouen area. While the invasion of Russia began on June 22, 1941, I was still in the south of France. On leave, I went to the Spanish border, and the Spanish fascists invited me to a bullfight in Bilbao. Our training continued, and we were in the new African Corps uniforms. In September 1941, we were ordered to reposition. Over 14 days, we moved through various places and reached the Russian border, knowing we were heading to Russia. On the way, my reconnaissance vehicle broke down, and I went back for spare parts. While returning, we were bombed. We had to halt in a forest with wounded comrades, I ended up injured in an explosion, and I woke up in an ambulance. I was missing teeth and had a leg injury. I left for Sprengberg in Niederlausitz in December after several operations. I stayed with 25 wounded men in the ward until almost Christmas. 
Then, as I recovered, they moved me to a maintenance company near Vienna in Brunnen. Before that, I spent a few months guarding trains. I was glad to be close to Vienna. Once I returned to my company, they sent me to the Neuwaldeck Tank School, also near Vienna. We went to Frankfurt for more training. Later, we were sent to Poland, though I can't recall the city. I do remember seeing countless Jews wearing yellow stars guarded by SS soldiers. We heard machine gun fire all night. I never found out their fate, but I assumed they were executed. The next day, we headed to Zaporizhia to prepare for the Stalingrad offensive. I was placed in the 9th Tank Division, an unfamiliar regiment. Due to my skill with armored vehicles, I had a special role. While en route to the 9th Tank Division, we received an order to stop. We were sent to defend a fortification near a bridge in Voskresno, along with 76 others from different units, including me. There were casualties. I served as a machine gunner on the right flank of our defense line and had to fight as an ordinary infantryman. As we delve deeper into Franz Eschner's gripping diary, remember to hit that like button if you're finding his story as fascinating as I am. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next chapter of this incredible journey through history. Now, let's get back to the diary and discover what happens next. After that, I was promoted to Oberfangen. For a few months, there wasn't much fighting in my area until May 1st. The enemy attacked us with about a battalion, around three to four companies. I was alone without backup, but we held off constant attacks for three days. On the fourth day, the Russian attacks stopped. Crows started pecking at bodies, so I tried to scare them away. We later arranged with Russians to take the bodies. I found a wounded Russian and helped him. We rotated to mortar units. I joined the 33rd Tank Regiment covering a 400-kilometer front with only 50 tanks. In May 1942, I joined the Neuwaldeck Tank School. We went to Frankfurt for training, then to Poland. I saw Jews with yellow stars guarded by SS soldiers. Russians attacked us often. We moved towards Stalingrad to assist the 6th Army. I was a sentry near Vasembryansk. We faced heavy artillery fire and tragic incidents. I joined the second company as a Tiger driver and moved to headquarters company. I learned tank maintenance. We moved with lights off, but faced difficulties. We couldn't break through Russian lines. We destroyed tanks near Slepsovo to prevent capture. I returned to the soldiers with help from Russian women. I earned the Iron Cross, second class. During the retreat, we faced challenges. We joined the 506th Heavy Tank Battalion with Royal Tigers. I fell ill and was hospitalized. On the Western Front, we faced gunfire and aircraft attacks. I faked being wounded to surrender to the Americans. As my story wraps up today, let's reflect on the heroes who emerge in even the darkest times. If you've been moved by this tale like I have, go ahead and smash that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications. More incredible history journeys await. Keep learning, growing, and seeking untold stories. Goodbye for now.